So next we're going to talk about subscripts. If you haven't already, watch the enum tutorial first. Subscripts are a very cool feature. They're shortcuts for retrieving member elements from a list, collection, or a sequence. And you can use them to set values by index without needing separate methods for setting and retrieval. So you can do this in the same way that you access arrays. In fact, arrays and dictionaries, you know that you use that square bracket notation. So if you had an array, some array, which is equal to one, two, three, so it's an array of ints. The way that you access that array is you type some array two. And the same thing with dictionaries, you access dictionaries in a very similar fashion. So internally, this whole square bracket syntax that it's implementing is being implemented with subscripts internally in Swift. So they use subscripts to implement the dictionary and the array syntax. So this means that we can also implement our own square bracket syntax. And when we get to generics in a second, you'll see that we can actually make our own array syntax. So let's say we have a struct called timetable and we have some type of multiplier and this is an integer and this is an example directly from the documentation. And here we're going to create a subscript. And that takes an index. And that index is going to be an integer. And that is also going to return an integer. So we're going to return multiplier. And you could do anything you want with subscripts. You don't have to just access arrays and stuff. So now you have a struct called timetable. So now we can create a new timetable. Let's say we make a constant let three times table equal timetable. And in here we set the multiplier to be three. So now what we can do is we can directly access this timetable with the square bracket notation. And we could just say square bracket three and it's going to return nine because the subscript said when they use the square bracket, which is a subscript, and they pass in some number multiply that number times your multiplier. And in this case, our multiplier was three. We multiplied three times three and we got nine. So we can actually access this. We could do 100 and that's gonna give us 300. We can do 900, that's gonna give us 2700. What exactly would one use this for? So usually it's a shortcut to access uh, collections and lists and sequence and stuff like that. Now we didn't use it for that. Swift's dictionary type implements its key value subscripting, which you've seen with the square brackets, as a subscript that takes and retrieves an optional value. When you have subscripts, you can take any number of input parameters and these input parameters can be of any type. So let's do something really funky here. So let's make some sort of randomizer that's gonna choose a random number. And this is kind of cool because you're probably wondering how to do this anyway. And this is just one way you can do this. So we're gonna get a range, which is going to be a range, which we learned about before. And this range is gonna be only made up of uint32. So that's unsigned integers. And this is a special type from Objective-C because you can use everything that's from Objective-C and C. And it's gonna return a new uh, uint32. And the reason we're using that is because we're gonna use arc for random uniform, which is a special function that comes from Objective C, but it only takes unsigned integer 32. It doesn't take regular Swift integers. So let's say we return range dot start index. We have the start index and we just add that to arc for random uniform and you can see that does take that unsigned integer 32 and what we're going to pass in is the range dot end index minus range dot start index plus one and let's just make sure this is capital i with range when you have a range you know one dot dot three or one dot dot four that range comes with a start index and an end index so now we're going to make a structure called level maker let's pretend we're making a game and this is going to be the way that it makes levels. And this is going to be one of those tile-based sort of Atari type games. And we're going to make a grid and this is going to be an array. Now I'm going a little bit over what you've done before here because we're going to make an array that has inside of it an array which has inside of it an unsigned integer 32. And again, the reason we're using that arc for random uniform takes unsigned integer 32 and they're not compatible with ints directly. Now what this is, is this is an array of arrays, otherwise known as a multi-dimensional array. And what that means is you're gonna have an array and inside the array is gonna be another array and inside that is gonna be a bunch of numbers so that you can essentially make up what is similar to a grid so you can know what's on different rows and columns and I'll show you in a second. We're gonna use the mutating keyword here and we're gonna create a function called make grid. We're gonna 
create the uh, number of columns is going to be a number that we need to know and we're just going to assign it directly here the number of rows equal to 52 it's just random numbers here and we're going to do a for loop here and we're going to loop through every column in 0 to the number of columns so bear with me here we're going to see what happens this is pretty cool so we're going to do new row is equal to another array of unsigned integer 32s and that's how we just generate a brand new array and so this is our new row that we don't have anything inside of it yet and inside of this row we're going to loop through this row by saying 0 to the number of rows and then we're going to say for each row in this loop we're going to say we're going to create a new row and we're going to append to it this uh, random number so we're going to use the randomizer that we have above and we're going to send it in a range of let's say 1 to 32 then we're going to do self.grid.append new row see what the error is here oh we just need one more closing parenthesis there so basically what we did is we created a bunch of rows and then we added them to an array and those arrays went into the big array so that we have rows and columns now what we're going to do here is we're going to allow a really cool little syntax using the subscript to access our grid so before you saw we only entered one number now we're going to enter two numbers we're going to take the row which is going to be an integer and the column which is going to be an integer we're going to return an unsigned integer 32 because that's going to be the number that we returned as an unsigned integer 32 because it came from the randomizer and we're going to at that point return the grid and we're going to get item at index row by item at index column so we're going to grab the row first and then the column get the number so you can use this kind of double square bracket because this is going to return an array itself because inside of the original array is another array and then that itself can then go to the individual number and then we just need our constructor or our init function here and we're just going to call make grid and the reason we use mutating is because we are changing self a member of the structure so now after this is all over let's go ahead and create our level here level two is going to be equal to a new level maker and once we do that you can see here this thing is looping through and this randomizer is getting run 1404 times now what we can do here is we could say level 2 dot grid and it's going to do it again because we saved this is why you want to make your numbers a little lower but if you look at this you can see that each row is an array itself and inside each one of those arrays is an individual integer so you've got a bunch of arrays inside of an array which kind of makes up a grid and this is how people often do tile based games now if we wanted to get the second row and the fifth item in that we could do that and it'll return back first it's got to loop through everything again <laughs> and it'll return back number 16 but because we used our subscript here to do a shorthand what we can do is we can say level 2 and get item 2 5 so that'll grab the item at row 2 and column 5 and that'll return back number 17 so you can see we have a little shorthand here which would be useful in a tile based game so kind of a long example there uh, to get to the point but it's also cool because you now have a randomizer here and we dealt with unsend integer 32 we did arc for random uniform and that's a very fast function to run that's that that's using subscripts to use your own square bracket notation and when we get to generics in a second you'll see how we can actually create our own arrays and dictionaries using subscripts and our own square bracket notation to do basically whatever we want but that subscript notation allows you to create that square bracket notation to access things individually and you don't just have to have one parameter you can have many parameters so next we'll talk about protocols thanks for watching and again please don't forget to subscribe to us on youtube twitter facebook google plus and whatever else you can subscribe to us on next up will be protocols